A very warm welcome to the 63rd edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Hope everybody is enjoying their Sunday. Of course, plenty of content here on the channel to look at. Back on Friday, we had the update number two of the winter 2023-24 ideas. We also spoke a little bit yesterday with the prospects of an early taste of winter as we progress towards the end of October and through November here, the CFSV2 indicating High latitude blocking, Greenland blocking, some very interesting things to look at. The Manjulian oscillation looks as if it is in a favourable phase, as well as the recurve of a super typhoon that will help buckle the jet, force the area of high pressure from west to east across the UK, up towards Scandinavia. A little taste of a easterly developing during next week. And then we also can have some very, very heavy rainfall to speak about as well. So that, um, of course, is going on at the moment. We have got a great week of weather coming up and content to speak about more aspects with regards to winter. Of course, update number two, getting into the nitty gritty with regards to El Nino, Indian Ocean Dipole, Manjulian Oscillation. We are going to look um, in the coming days at the long range models here and we will discuss in quite a bit of detail with regards to what they are showing. So we're going to look at the Copernic Copernicus website next week or this upcoming week anyway and we'll pinpoint each individual model and look at what they're showing what their October solution is for the upcoming winter season so if you haven't already done so and you're a winter weather lover like myself and like many of you out there be sure to hit that subscribe button like the video let YouTube know that you're enjoying the content I would greatly appreciate that it is a massive support and of course I am now sitting at 5,205 subscribers with over 100,000 watch hours. Really, I greatly appreciate everybody's kind support, kind comments and um, you know constructive criticism. The odd correction now and again, I'm a great believer in giving and providing accurate information here on the channel. So I do appreciate feedback and I, like I say, I appreciate if I make the odd mistake here and there as well. So be sure to check out the, um, all the content here in the channel, including the, um, the second winter update back on Friday. And I hope to have the third winter update available for you sometime just before I go away on holiday on the 6th of November. Um, I will hopefully try and provide you with a little bit more insight in terms of actual tangible ideas with regards to what I think winter may bring. At the moment, I'm very much on the fence. Depends on what the El Nino does, how much impact that uh, seemingly east-based um, El Nino profile versus a bit more of a kind of central-based atmospheric response. It's going to be interesting to see as we go through the next four, five, even six weeks, the behavior of the El Nino both from an oceanic point of view, response to the atmosphere, exactly what we're seeing is going to, I think, be critical as to what type of winter we're going to see here in the UK, Ireland and Europe, and, and as well as that across the Northern Hemisphere overall. So uh, be sure to check out marfolkandweather.com, check out that latest article. There should be a link, I think, in the description below. But let's get right to the ocean temperature anomalies here at the moment. This is how the Oceans are looking very strong cooling, as you can see here, from the coast of Sumatra and in Indonesia out towards the Maldives at the moment here. Very warm water compared to average across the western Indian Ocean. I think we are going to start to see this weaken, I think, this positive IOD signal as we go forward. Now, there is other aspects that I've not touched on in the winter ideas that, that are going to be coming up. The multivariant ENSO index not only looks at the El Nino you know, the raw look, but also it incorporates other aspects as well. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at the SOI, which is um, the Southern Nino Index, which is the difference in pressure between Tahiti and Darwin. It has been of a negative um, at the moment here, which represents, um, you know, high pressure over Darwin, lower pressure over Tahiti. So that is an El Nino base state signal. We, of course, got the El Nino I don't think that's been uh, shown any any real signs of, of growing recently. 
and that could be a, an in, an interesting indication as we go forward. We've still got the negative PDO signal here, cold waters over the North Pacific, as well as extending from off the Baja of California across the southern side of the Hawaiian I, I, Islands here. I'm struggling to say that. Warm waters across the north uh, portion of the Pacific. We've got a warm Mediterranean basin. We've got a warm North Atlantic. But there is interesting signals going on here. Some subtle changes take place. Notice this cool water here extending from, um, you know, over the western portion of the Pacific. That is actually the wake of a super typhoon that has been transiting the western side of the, the Pacific Basin. And that's going to be entering the North Pacific. I think it already is heading towards the Aleutian Islands here. And that also could help uh, change the signal to a firmer negative AO and NAO as we go towards the end of this month and into November here. And uh, the combination of a uh, phase eight and one of the Mandrian Oscillation, which would favor upward motion over the West Indian Ocean and over the Central Pacific. Um, that could, along with the recurving typhoon, this was something I looked at yesterday's video, talking about the possible implications, both the MJO and that uh, recurving typhoon over the West Pacific could increase the high latitude blocking. So it's going to shift the, 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 the pattern over, you know, the Northern Hemisphere, actually. Even here in the UK, we're going to start to see that high shift up towards Scandinavia. We could see a little bit of a sniff of an easterly and a cold easterly at that, by the way, for early season standards. And then the high seen by the models and possibly due to that shift in the Pacific Ocean could then see that area of high pressure go from Scandinavia towards, um, towards Greenland as we go towards the early portion of November. So very interesting things to come here, and I hope to try and deliver as much information and understanding as to what's going on. But notice the amount of cooling taking place over the Southern Hemisphere oceans, the Atlantic, the Pacific, and even the Indian Ocean here, we're seeing a bit of a cooling taking place, which is rather interesting. This is the seven day change in the sea surface temperature profile here so we've got cooling quite a bit of cooling across particularly the west pacific the north pacific we've got a little bit of warming taking place over the gulf of alaska so that cool pool that was developing over the last four to six weeks it's kind of slightly moderated a wee bit north atlantic has cooled slightly but we've got warming taking place off um ireland and the uk here we've got um cooling still across much of the Indian Ocean so we may start to see the positive IOD signal uh, ease as we go forward a little bit of cooling take place over the Baltic Sea but of course no surprise here thanks to that discharge of Arctic air that of course has been a real shock to the system here across the UK in the, the last couple of days here as the Arctic door has finally opened up and we're seeing that temperature crash taking place. By the way did you happen to live in the greater London area or southern Britain overall. This day, back 36 years ago, it was the great storm of 1987, the night of the 15th and the 16th of October. Uh, I'll remember um, till the day I die, quite honestly. Even though I was four years of age, very, very young, I've still got faint memories of um, myself, my brother, and my mum and dad all curled up in a bed in Camberwell, Central London. It was actually the Salvation Army Training College. My dad was, and my mum was um, in training to become Salvation Army officers. So we were actually living in, in the head, uh, in the in the, the facility for the Salvation Army, uh, the, college, the training college. And, uh, you know, I can, I can remember that night, actually. And I, I always believed that that was the seed to my weather interest today. But 36 years ago tonight was the night that the storm of 87 took place. Let me know in the comments section below, actually, did you experience that night yourself? Fascinating stuff, wasn't it? By the way, we are also going to go onto the Copernicus website this upcoming week as well and look at um, the global models with regards to the winter season coming up. So we'll look at the, each individual model um, I'll explain what they're showing. This is, of course, for the October um, output here. And we'll also look at the C3S multi-model and show um, 
exactly what it's showing. So exciting stuff with regards to the upcoming winter season. And we'll look at the long range models and show what is taking place here as we go forward. Here is the temperature anomalies here for the month of October so far of weatherbelt.com. You can see here plenty of warmth across the planet as no uh, you know, surprise there. But we also do have some interesting areas of cool to speak about. Central Australia, the north of Africa, sub-Saharan Africa below average. We've got cool and average across parts of southwest and southeast China, parts of northern India where we continue to see heavy rainfall. Of course, Alaska has seen quite a cold October. Parts of Greenland, cold and average here. Um, Argentina, parts of Chile, parts of far south Brazil, below average conditions here. And uh, Iceland has been quite cold compared to average. The areas, um, well, including Antarctica, quite a lot of cold across this region of the world as well here. Plenty of warmth stacked up across the north here. Uh, much of Russia, um, far northern portions of Canada very very warm compared to average here where we've got quite a lot of blocking taking place at the moment much of Canada below uh, above average actually central United States above below average across the west and southeastern United States at this moment in time looking at Europe specifically we've got a, be a below average for most of a uh, Norway Sweden and Finland exceptions of southern Sweden parts of south coast of Norway um, above average We've got the core of the warmth actually this month across the center of Europe and across much of Iberia. Average conditions, which is interesting, across the far north of Scotland here. Will we see these blues start to spread south um, thanks to the colder air coming down from the north? That will be an interesting question going forward here. Let's have a wee tour and see what the extremes have taken place around the world, of course, as we normally do here on the Global Weather Report. New October record for Belize, record breaking high temperatures here. We've had after the hottest night on record for Miami. Today tied its highest October temperature with 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 Celsius. Uh, also Guatemala and Honduras recording record breaking warm temperatures. Interesting tweet here by the ECCC, which uh, Canadian Ice Services uh, indicates here that this year, uh, the northern route of the Northwest pa Passage had a minimum sea ice coverage of 6% during the week of August 27th. And this uh, coverage is the second lowest on record since 1968. The lowest was 4% and that occurred back in 2011, which is quite an interesting retweet by our friend Thierry Goose here. Let's continue to skip forward. You can see here uh, mid-October warmth across many parts of Europe. Temperatures high as 35 Celsius in Spain, 33.5 in France, 27 in Switzerland. And we had uh, also temperatures as high as that in Andorra, above 1,100 meters. That's pretty impressive stuff, actually, for this time of the year. In, in, in uh, Austria, 29 Celsius, third highest temperature ever recorded in the country for after the 10th of October here. Let's continue to skip through see plenty of heat across parts of south america but like i said we do have some quite cold conditions across argentina and parts of chile as well so uh like to show you the big picture of course new seasonal low in canada this is back on the 11th of october at minus 27.3 at eureka nunavut uh, that's fairly normal for this time year uh, thierry says the first minus 20 of the season in russia yesterday with dal yankar a uh, recording minus 20.8 celsius uh, and minus 21 celsius today minus 19.9 at oymyakon um and verkoyansk minus 13.1 celsius winter of course is now starting to gather pace across the far north of uh, the world at the moment here uh, so have we got any other interesting things taking place some pretty um, impressive warmth actually across parts of a uh, of british columbia temperatures nearly 30 celsius and uh, at lytton which of course is the record holder uh, for canada records fallen well all over asia temperatures as high as 36.3 in singapore a new official monthly record 38.7 in indonesia only 0 0.8 celsius by the way beyond the all-time record here so uh, yeah, um, plenty of warmth to speak about. We are, of course, seeing temperatures increase as we go forward.
Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.